LARSA 4D live load analysis is performed by means of influence lines and influence surfaces that quickly compute the worst case loading configurations on bridge decks, including bridges with curved and skewed roadways and non parallel curb lines. Extending the notion of an influence line onto a 2D surface, the influence surface algorithms integrated into LARSA automatically determine the transverse location of the design lanes on shell deck models, along with live load placement within the design lane. After performing an influence-based analysis, the vehicle's lane loading and the associated load factors are entered into LARSA 4D's post-analysis cases, and various loading scenarios can be evaluated without needing to run a new analysis, which is particularly helpful when load rating structures. Users can create their own vehicle definitions in LARSA 4D's database editor. This allows creating a standardized vehicle library for organization-wide use. Alternatively, users can select from code-based vehicle libraries that come preloaded in the program for various international design codes. It's also worth noting that as with many other analysis types in LARSA, Influence-based live load analysis can be performed embedded within any step of a stage construction analysis using the program's analysis scenarios feature. LARSA 4D's powerful load positioning solver, combined with influence surfaces and our flexible vehicle library and post-analysis capabilities, allows engineers to perform refined live load analysis in a practical, intuitive manner. In the remainder of this video, We'll review the influence analysis steps in LARSA 4D through influence surfaces. Influence-based live load analysis is performed in five main steps in LARSA. Step one is creating a finite element model for the analysis. Our example is an influence surface analysis model, including a deck surface mesh of shell elements. The second step is creating the influence line or the surface, which is comprised of four substeps. This starts with defining roadway geometry. We create a new lane surface object and specify its width. Then, with the path spreadsheet open, we define the center line of the roadway. The center line consists of a series of control points specified relative to the elements in the model. For curved surfaces, curve fitting options are available. After entering the center line, the next step is to add span mark entries to the path. These are used to specify after which control point a span ends. These marks are used by Lars's vehicular load positioning algorithm later on when placing multiple trucks in different spans. Now we can set up unit loading by creating a moving load case and specifying position increments. We enter two increments in the roadway's longitudinal and transverse directions. These are basically the grid spacing of influence coefficients on the influence surface. The last substep, creating the influence line or surface, is running a moving load analysis. Here the influence-based live load analysis is performed independently. However, this can again be embedded within stage construction, using the program's analysis scenarios. This allows users to run multiple influence-based live load analyses when the bridge is partly or fully constructed. Once the analysis completes, we can turn on Analyze Loads in the graphics display and spot check unit loading on the deformed model. Returning to our main steps, the third step is getting the vehicle definitions by connecting a vehicle database to the project. In this example, we've connected the Ashto Vehicle Patterns database that comes preloaded in LARSA, containing the standard vehicles per Ashto LRFD. For custom vehicles, you can create your own axle-based or wheel-based vehicle definitions using the program's database editor. After having the vehicles ready in the project, we can enter the code-specific loading requirements in the post-analysis result case. From the results menu, we create a new influence line surface case. 
As we can see, the case includes three tabs. Under the General Options tab, we select the influence surface to perform the computations on. When more than one surface is present, you can select from the surfaces that are available in the drop-down list. Per Ashto LRFD, we'll enter 12 feet for the designated design lane width. The transverse offset input is only for influence line analysis. It simplifies the creation of multiple lanes at different transverse locations. The load for extreme force effects option is checked so that the vehicle wheels and axles and lane loading locations that do not contribute to the extreme forces are not considered. Correspondingly, the complete patterns only option is unchecked so that the vehicle is allowed to pass the beginning or end of the surface in the roadway longitudinal direction. This is because the worst position of a vehicle is often when it is only partially on the lane or surface. Coefficients are signless is used when modeling braking forces, which can occur in either longitudinal direction. The overall factor is applied to the final influence results, which is usually defined as 1. Multiple presence factors are a set of factors to apply the results depending on the number of lanes loaded. Here we enter multiple presence factors per Ashto LRFD. The overturning effect factors can be specified only for influence surfaces. These factors adjust wheel loads in an axle without changing the total force. Generally, it's used to model the effect of super elevation. The longitudinal factors can be specified to apply an overall factor that varies longitudinally. It's primarily intended to be used when modeling centrifugal forces on multi-curve bridges. Moving to the vehicular loading tab, we continue to define loading scenarios per Ashto LRFD. This includes three scenarios. A single HL93 design truck in lane loading, a single HL93 design tandem in lane loading, and lastly, 90% of the effect of two HL93 design trucks and lane loading. For all scenarios, we apply an impact factor of 1.33 and specify a two-foot margin on each side of the lane. For the double truck case, Ashto also requires one load pattern per span and a minimum spacing of 50 feet between them. Here we can apply transverse constraints to control where on the roadway the lane is allowed to be. We finalize the post-analysis case setup by switching to the Uniform Patch Loading tab and entering the width and magnitude of the lane loading per Ashto LRFD. After setting up our influence-based result case in the last step, we can spot check the results graphically in the influence coefficients mode. We can also switch to the detailed results accessed through Larsis spreadsheets. In spreadsheets, the rows alternate between minimum and maximum values. Our envelopes show the worst case negative loading and the worst case positive loading for each spreadsheet row. Under the result case column, the coordinate and direction of each placed vehicle are listed. The vehicles are separated by semicolons, and the uniformly distributed lane loading is indicated as UDL. At the end, the applied multiple presence factor is reported. As a special feature provided in the Live Load Results spreadsheet, you can right-click a row and capture a particular load configuration as a result case. This result case can be used to access concurrent results for the selected critical live loading configuration. This concludes our short overview on how to perform an influence-based live load analysis in LARSA 4D. Once you've completed steps 1 to 3 in this video, you can repeat the last two steps for various loading scenarios, evaluating as many possibilities as needed without having to re-perform a new analysis. We hope you found this video helpful. And we welcome you to contact us if we can provide further information or assist your project needs.